Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game uh, from the TCEC9 Super Final between Stockfish 8 and Houdini 5 and uh, it's uh, well it's quite a quite a crazy one. As usual the Super Final consists of 100 games, uh, they each play the same opening with uh, the, both the black and the white pieces and then uh, they, they switch. So first uh, it's like uh, uh, we go for the Knight of Sicilian, then Stockfish has the white piece in the Knight of Sicilian or rather in a line of the Knight of Sicilian and then they switch then Houdini 5 has the white pieces in the same line then they go through other lines through other openings and so on when they cover 100 games whoever wins the most is the winner and uh, this is a very interesting game it comes as a suggestion from gen z on twitter so thank you for that very uh, very uh, much appreciated uh, so let's just check it out and it's always dangerous to watch these engine games i remember when um, uh, when alpha zero first uh, uh, came into existence and we got uh, got a glimpse of Alpha Zero's games and we were you know watching them, enjoying them, even trying to to maybe study them. And then when uh, there were no more Alpha Zero games to cover, it was like we had to go cold turkey. And then Human Games they appeared like I mean what's this? It's like going from let's say 8K graphics to like 360P graphic uh, graphics. So not something uh, you you should do on a regular basis. So uh, th that's why we, we don't show engine games all that much, but still. We when, when a nice one such as this one appears, we will definitely check it out. So uh, the engines are pre-arranged. Uh, uh, we're not going to dwell too long on the opening. So here we have e4 by Stockfish. Uh, c5, knight to f3. We have d6, so a nice Sicilian defense. We have d4, captures, captures, and now knight to f6. We have knight to c3, and of course a6. Uh, sorry, not a6, not the knight of, we have g6, the dragon Sicilian. Uh, we have bishop to e3, and now bishop to g7. And now f3, uh, uh, the beginning of the Yugoslav attack against the dragon Sicilian. And this is something if you've... Uh, uh, heard it, for example, Bobby Fischer often claimed that uh, the, the dragon is just bad uh, for, for black because w all white has to do is do go for this setup, a bishop e3, queen d2, start pushing those pawns, g4, h4, h5, bust open the position and win the game. And uh, it's been uh, sort, of, sort of had that uh, kind of a repu reputation over the years. And while it did uh, come back uh, f from time to time, it's really hard to say. Now it's, you know, if you have a nice preparation, then maybe you can surprise someone. But if you if you don't know what you're doing it's a very very dangerous to play uh, so here we have castles and now queen to d2 preparing this bishop to h6 the uh, trade of the dark square bishops we have knight to c6 and now uh, knight, knight to c6 and now bishop to c4 so uh, everything we've been playing before this is the main line of the dragon bishop to d7 and queen side castles now and the rook to c8 black goes for the standard setup he wants to play knight e5 uh, put pressure on the bishop then bring the knight to c4 attack the dark square bishop and the queen uh, and so on so this is all very uh, uh, standard stuff with bishop to b3 and knight e5 so all been played before there are thousands of games in the database with this exact same idea uh, h4, white starts what uh, Fisher uh, was, was talking about, h4, g4, h5. So knight to c4, now if uh, white doesn't capture, then we're going to eliminate white's dark square bishop, and this is just a beautiful piece, so we would be very happy to eliminate that one. So bishop captures, we much rather give up the light square bishop, we have rook captures, and h5 now. So a nice pawn sacrifice to get things started. Uh, knight captures and now g4. Instead of g4, you, you might con uh, consider something like rook captures on h5. And if you were playing a bullet or a blitz game, you probably would go for this. But here, as this is a, well, a very, very serious game between two engines, uh, we have g4 pushing back the knight, knight f6, and now a nice prophylactic king to b1. Uh, and uh, rook to e8 and here b3 chasing away the rook and here the rook goes back to c8 in the other game where the colors were reversed uh, where uh, Houdini had the white pieces Stockfish retreated to c7 not to c8 but uh, that game uh, well we're gonna discuss that game uh, after we check out this one so rook back to c8 and now knight to d5 very very uh, good square for the knight so of course black wants to eliminate this knight knight captures e captures and now we reach the position that was already 
reached uh, and it was uh, reached in Germany under uh, under 14 championship in 2003 uh, between Felix Klein and Jan Sol uh, and uh, in that game uh, the uh, bishop to e5 was played however for this game uh, we have e5 and it is only now as of move 19 that we have a completely new game so who would think that in 2003 those two those two gentlemen were playing such a such a top tier game and who, who I, I always uh, imagined that you know some incredibly strong players were checking out the game watching their moves and they were like ah, nah, it's you know it's it's not all that impressive <clears throat> uh, but okay uh, e5 uh, and here white of course captures alpha son so d captures an e6 f captures an e6 and now uh, queen to h2 and black doesn't really have uh, any defense against this the h7 pawn is under attack the d6 pawn is under attack and this is what they probably meant uh, or, or rather what bobby meant when he said it was too easy to attack black uh, very often it will be uh, difficult for black to, to prevent something like this uh, white just sacrificed the white uh, one pawn and he already has a very nice attack so queen to f6 uh, creating some counterplay if now the knight uh, for example moves then queen to b2 will be checkmate uh, but now comes not queen captures on h7 right away and it's very interesting i mean you anyone would pretty much pre-move this but stockfish first improves the position with a4 uh, problem is uh, after you capture and king of seven you don't really have a good continuation if g5 yes you push back the queen queen e5 now let's say rook h6 goes after this pawn but now queen captures on e3 and after rook captures on g6 going after the bishop rook g8 and now we get this position where white can continue with f4 and so on. Uh, the pawn cannot be captured because rook f6 check uh, wins the queen. The bishop, of course, is pinned. So, uh, well, all this is possible. Stockfish says, no, th th I mean, there's uh, no rush. We're just going to play a4 first. So once all of this has been played, then I will already uh, have played a4. That's how that's how engines play. So here b6, uh, and only now queen captures on h7 with check. King f7, and now we go into the setup that we've discussed. g5, queen to e5, and now rook to h6. Putting pressure on g6, giving up the dark square bishop. So queen captures on e3, and now rook captures on g6. Rook to g8, and now the move we've discussed, and that is f4. Uh, so now, uh, of course, this cannot be captured. If you capture it, rook f6 check, like we've said, wins the queen. So instead, we have d5 by black. And now, what do you play here? Well, white just uh, starts uh, marching forward. We have f5, e captures on f5, and now uh, knight captures on f5. And now there's a triple attack on the bishop here, and it's very... Uh, it's a very tricky position not a lot of moves are or rather there's only one move that doesn't lose this position for black so feel free to pause the video and try to find this idea for houdini while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on the not playing bishop captures on f5. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, yes, it's uh, we're going to do it in slow motion. Uh, queen captures on b3. That's that's the good stuff. But, but just in case you're wondering why not bishop captures on f5, well, because if bishop captures, then we go into this rook captures on g7 with check, rook captures and queen captures bishop with check, and we also pick up this rook. Once the king moves, we're just gonna eliminate the rook, and then let's say whatever black plays. Uh, yes, the material is equal, but the white king is nicely protected here, nothing you can do to pretty much harass it, uh, and uh, the black king is uh, wide open here, so it's gonna be very easy to attack. Uh, and this is a completely winning for white so we return to the slow motion queen captures on b3 and now what do you play you are in check and you only have one move if if you move the king then it, this is just checkmate so you have to capture the queen so uh, c captures on b3 and now comes bishop captures on f5 with check king to a2 and now not rushing into bishop captures on g6 because if you do this then rook to f1 check the king has to move and then white starts playing and you really don't want to lose uh, uh, either of, of the two bishops because they're just amazing they're uh, attacking the, the white king here and you do not want to trade uh, either of them so after king to a2 we have rook to c2 with check king to a3 and only now bishop captures on g6 but now it's a bit different because now rook to f1 check 
king to e7 and now uh, you don't really have the option of uh, capturing this guy uh, because if you capture it then just uh, bishop to b2 picks up the queen so you have to capture the rook it kind of sounds normally of course we're going to capture the rook but it's the bishop pair i mean look how look how strong this bishop pair is so maybe grabbing the light square bishop would be better for white however Queen captures on g8 is a must. You, you cannot touch the bishop. And now bishop to b2 check. We have king to b4 and now bishop to c3 check. And now if uh, Stockfish wanted, Stockfish could repeat this. For example, just go back and forth. Uh, but uh, Stockfish wants to win. Stockfish goes king b5. And now bishop to d3 with check. We will win the, the lights. Uh, <laughs> not the, the light square rook, but the, the white rook. So king to c6 and now bishop to e5. Uh, with uh, with a discovered check from the rook, we have king to b7 and now rook to c7 with check. So the king has to go further up the board. Uh, we have king to a8, not of course in front of the bishop, that would just be weird. So bishop captures on f1, we grab the rook and now queen captures on d5. So uh, Stockfish did not want to draw, Stockfish still feels confident that, that uh, he's going to be able to win this. So bishop back to g7 and now king to b8, pushing back the rook, rook to d7 attacking the queen and the queen e4 check now. So if uh, the queen can somehow connect the check to pick off one of these bishops or the rook, then of course the position will be winning, uh, but that's easier said than done. King f8 and now queen to f5 check, yes you've, uh, you've accomplished this, but rook to f7. You will not be winning that bishop. Queen c8 check, king to e7, now queen to c7 check, king e6 and queen to c6 check. King f5 and now queen to d5 with check. And now what do you play here? Problem is if you go king to g6 then white just wins very easily. Queen e6 check and you don't really have a good move here. You have to move the king then just g6 check and that's it. You, you just fall apart here. It just captures the rook and, and it's game over. So instead, uh, after this queen to d5 check, we have bishop blocking with check, uh, king to a8, and now, well, you don't have bishop to g2, unfortunately, but uh, you do have rook to f8 check, king captures on a7, and now bishop to e2. Uh, we have b4, white doesn't really have a way of winning any of the pieces, uh, so white will now try to eliminate this pawn and then push the two past pawns to victory. So bishop to h5, trying to kick away the queen with bishop to f7, and now king captures on b6. And now we have this position, uh, two bishops and a rook against the queen and three passed pawns. So bishop to f7, kicks away the queen, queen f3 check, and now bishop to f4 blocking. We have queen to c6, uh, and now rook to b8 with check. King a7, and now king captures on g5. So eliminating one of white's passed pawns, uh, queen to d7 now, uh, attacking the, the bishop here, and the bishop back to h5. Uh, we have b5, uh, black king needs to be very, very careful, because if those bishops uh, somehow get, uh, you know, get angry, it could be, uh, could be game over. So here, rook to e8, uh, just, uh, you know, getting the rook to, to a safer square. We have b6, and now bishop to e3. Uh, so, okay, now the pawn cannot move. We have queen to d5 with check, king to h4, and now a5. The other pawn is also marching up the board. Rook e7 check, king to a8, and now rook to e8 with check. King b7, now you have to get out of checks if you want to uh, do anything more than, than draw the game. So, rook to e7 with check, king to c8, and now bishop to g4 with check. King back to b8 and now bishop to f4 check. We have king to a8 and now comes king to g3. Uh, you don't really gain anything by this check. King to a7 and then you just uh, uh, have to worry about those pawns. So king to g3. Now with the idea that if white pushes for example b7 then uh, you run into trouble because then rook to e8 check and you're in a, a lot of problems. b8 queen, now we're going to capture this just uh, and you really don't have anything and you also have to worry about ideas like bishop f3 then you lose the queen and so on. So instead after king g3 we have queen to g8. And now, okay, the bishop is pinned, so maybe you can now push the pawn, but now comes rook to e5. Uh, we have a6, now comes rook to e6, attacking this pawn here. King to b7, now ready to push the a pawn, and now bishop to e3, going after this b6 pawn. Uh, here we have a7, uh, rook captures on b6 with check, king to c7, and rook to a6 now. 
uh, we have a8 queen getting that queen finally into the game uh, and now comes uh, bishop uh, to f4 with check king to b7 and now you really don't have uh, any other options you have to capture rook captures and now we have king captures and it was in this position that uh houdini 5 resigned the game as there seems to be nothing more you can do here which is actually really weird because this is a table based draw or rather it's not a draw it's a forced win for white from this position uh, in 72 moves but if uh, you know it takes uh, more than 50 moves to, to win uh, then uh, it's uh, it's a draw by uh, by a 50 move rule so i don't know if uh, in this uh, match between stockfish and houdini the 50 move rule applies uh, because this game actually ended by uh houdini resigning which uh, which uh, I, I believe in these engine games happens when both engines uh, agree that the evaluation is over 10 for uh, for either of them uh, but this is in, in human terms this is a draw so it would take uh, 70 moves uh, 72 moves with perfect play, play from white uh, and of course black to, to actually win this position which is, which is kind of a draw so i don't know why this was with why this was attributed as a win for stockfish but it was uh so yeah, really really impressive stuff this game really really had it all uh from the from the beginning uh, to to that crazy crazy game and then the then this queen capture some b3 action and then all of that i mean it was just uh, pretty pretty crazy it's hard to imagine that uh, we we will see uh, any humans playing playing such a game but you never know uh it's not not uncommon for it to happen from time to time uh, but yeah, uh, like I said, Fisher said just push those h4, g4, h5 and you're gonna win the game easily. But here uh, Houdini uh, prevailed and was able to hold this to a draw or not. I have no idea what happened here. Uh, but yeah, uh, in the end, Stockfish won the super final with a score of 54 and a half to 45 and a half. So Stockfish 8 is the, is the uh, uh, TCEC uh, season 9 uh, uh, champion. So uh, awesome stuff from uh, from Stockfish. We'll see what happens in the next season, as you know these things uh, tend to tend to change. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Lucin uh, Lucinda Time, Ciao Antonio, Francesco Dandekar, uh, Tom Derelau, uh, Richard Lawrence, and EatFrangos.com uh, for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage. Uh, of the Morphe saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world, uh, the candidates tournament is also uh, about to, to resume. Uh, th so thank you all, I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.